got, we got sound yet? Okay. Sort of, yes, okay, sweet. Okay, I hope, I hope nobody else is feeling as dusty as I am this morning, but uh, never mind, moving on. <laughs> so, quick, a quick intro to what we've been doing with OpenStack and other things at the New, Ze uh, New Zealand eScience infrastructure. Uh, so, I'm, I'm the dusty guy on the left there. Uh, we've got Mikhail here from Stack HPC, uh, and well, Sean's nowhere to be seen yet, but uh, we'll find him later. Oh, okay. Um, all right, so just a quick intro to Nessie. So we, we support a bunch of different science in New Zealand. We're a national collaboration of the University of Auckland, NIWA, uh, University of Otago, and Manaki Whenua Land Care Research. So we're a team that's spread throughout New Zealand. You can see we've got staff around four different sites supporting a bunch of different research and, and science across New Zealand. So mainly mainly in, in the research space, but we're also uh, working with the Crown Research Institutes in New Zealand, and so they're doing also translational research work as, as well. So we, we come from a high performance computing heritage, and the, this is our, our primary data center and, and the main machines that we have in it at the moment. You've got uh, on the left hand side there, Maui, it's an XC50. Cray machine, and uh, on on well, sorry, on the right, on the left, uh, is Mahuika, which is our capacity cluster system, and and that's really you know so that's that's our, our bread and butter, uh, the storage in the centre. We have uh, uh, so high performance computing and data analytics service. Uh, we do a lot of training as well around the sector. There's data transfer and sharing as part of that platform. And we run a consultancy service as well. So we have computational scientists working with researchers on their codes. So what are we doing with OpenStack and why are we here talking about HPC? Well, that, those platforms that I showed you there, they, they originally had some OpenStack built into them, but it was uh, very tightly coupled and didn't quite allow us to do the things that we were hoping to do there which was to bring in new styles of access, to be able to give users their own environments, provide multi-tenancy at the platform layer. And so we run, we run a thing called our platform, uh, our national platforms framework as, as our investment mechanism and, and how we decide you know, what new systems that we should be looking at, services that we might bring in. And so last year, we put together a case around both scaling up some of our existing infrastructure and, and bringing in more GPU capacity and those sorts of things, but also around fundamentally building a new platform to address these new styles of access, provide increased user, user, interact, uh, user interactivity, uh, that get that data and computer isolation with a more flexible design than traditional HPC. Uh, and mainly, at least for the first year or so supporting our learning in that space in operating such a platform. So that was enabled by a pretty small investment uh, from our platform access fund, which is, so we take subscriptions for access to some of the HPC services, and so we've reinvested that to, to build this platform initially. So this, um, this is a, a, a quick look at how we're sort of viewing the services that we might be offering out of this platform, and you can see that this is more than just OpenStack. Um, so OpenStack is clearly, it's key in there at the platform layer and providing that multi-tenancy, but we're thinking about this as a, a broader ecosystem of, of services that we might be offering out, and also ways of bringing tenants into the environment as well. So you can see, you know, going up from campus network integration and data management and some of these things that aren't part of the open infrastructure stable, but are of course very relevant in, in the research and in the HPC domain. So when, when, we, uh, when we proposed that investment, we also had a few key use cases in mind that we were going to use as pilots to inform our learning through that. So a couple of those here, we've got the, um, of course there's, there's some internal service development going on, just actually Giving, giving our DevOps people, our support people, uh, a platform that they can use to, to build things without requiring root access on, on the HPC system. 
those age-old problems, but also, so we've got a partnership with Genomics Aotearoa, which is a, another research platform in New Zealand funded by the government uh, to build a genomic data repository and uh, another Pathfinder project looking at using uh, genomic, uh, genomics in clinical medicine uh, and using, uh, creating an environment with trusted workflows and uh, limited access to patient data. So the, uh, the Aotearoa Genomic Data Repository, uh, that, that's been quite a success story, so that's in production now. That is a Taonga species database, so Taonga species are, or Taonga is a, a treasure for, in, in Māori culture. Uh, and so that's been a co-design process uh, with Genomics Aotearoa and Iwi uh, to, to build this database and govern access to it. So it's high quality genomes and researchers can apply for access to use that for particular use cases. It's only a small database, but for us, technology wise, that's a, it's a cloud native microservices architecture. It's built on a product called Gen3. Uh, and so we've had people working on that and then deploying that onto Magnum on OpenStack. So one of the other pilot use cases is research software engineers. So we're, we're sort of not looking at going out direct to all researchers and providing them access straight on to an infrastructure as a service cloud, but thinking about the research software engineer and the, I guess, you know, the, the, the DevOps within a research group and what they need. Uh, and so at the moment we're working on identifying those user journeys and, and some of the value-add services that we can provide for, for that class of users. There's also a partnership that we have with a group at University of Auckland, uh, the Strong AI Lab, SAIL, to bring some large GPU capacity into this environment. So I showed you that tenancy layer cake before. So one of the key um, features of the platform is multi-tenant bare metal. And so that enables us to have groups actually bring their own hardware in and, and use the platform to manage access to it. Uh, so another big use case is a, is a recent partnership with one of the Crown Research Institutes in New Zealand, Ag Research. So they had a, a small internal HPC capability uh, and a fairly large but um, unwieldy data environment. Four campuses with NAS boxes spread everywhere, backups going to and from, um, and that was essentially getting out of hand for them. So they went to market and uh, looking, looking for a solution to this, ev eventually partnered with HPE uh, to provide them with uh, hardware uh, for a new environment, but then realized that they, they didn't quite have the capability to be operating it themselves uh, and, and to be realizing the value added services on top of it. So they came and partnered uh, looked to partner with us, and th this was at the time when we were designing the flexible HPC platform. So we, we took the initial design and, and then partnered with HPE to fit that into the flexible HPC platform. So you can see the diagram here. The blue parts are where we're bringing aspects of their platform into the flexible HPC service. So the, uh, the Tamaki data center piece over here on the left is an OpenStack environment. Uh, over here, we've got an object store at a different site. And then there's a, there's a bunch of other pieces that are outside of the OpenStack environment, but part of their tenancy. So a big data infrastructure, a GPFS file system, DMF, a tape library, zero watt storage, uh, some of these things. So that's a, that's a pretty deep partnership. And actually, that, that investment and, and their, their environment actually dwarfed Nessie's initial investment into into this platform, um, but I guess you know we, we must we were doing something interesting, and so you know they, they wanted to be on it, so that's great. Um, it's a quick look at the back at that tenancy diagram, looking at the ag research tenancy. So you can see here um, we've got some of, some of the shared services in uh, in blue that they're um, making use of, and then some, you know, some tenant-specific things in green. 
All right, so moving on from the use cases, from an infrastructure perspective, the platform, like I said, multi-tenant, uh, bare metal infrastructure, supporting high performance workloads, cloud and bare metal provisioning um, onto a common network. Uh, what else have we got? One of the interesting things that we've done here is, is it on this slide, is partner with the National Research and Education Network in New Zealand, which is called RIANS, uh, to have direct connection onto their network. So we're using a, um, a layer three fabric within the data center network for this platform. And we're actually peering directly from our core switches in that fabric onto RIANS. Um, and so one of the things that that's enabling us to do is have, we have a public network of course, and that's within our VRF zero on, on that, in that networking environment. Uh, but then Ag Research, for example, have a VRF as well. So they were actually able to bring provider networks into that environment, which are within their private WAN on RIANS. So that's quite a powerful capability. Uh, and yeah, with, with no VPN overheads or anything like that. Uh, so capacities and so on, we've got, um, so like I said, you can, the dot points over here, our initial investment's quite small, it's only about 1,000 vCPUs, 30 terabytes of flash storage, half petabyte of object, uh, and a few, a few GPUs, uh, and of course the, the 100 gig fabric, uh, a few, you know, pictures of some of the um, technologies and so on that we're using there. Uh, if you were at the scientific SIG yesterday, I mentioned some work we were doing around identity using Keycloak and, uh, and free IPA. So I'm going to pass over to Mikhail in a moment, but I just want to say we've been working on implementing this platform with Stack HPC. Um, and so you know, one of the things that we see as key here is building an open infrastructure. Um, we, we're not uh, particularly wedded to only doing on-premise cloud but we do want solutions that are fundamentally not locked in. Um, and so the partnership with Stack HPC here has been pretty key because they work upstream first. Uh, and so there's been a few things along the way here, which Mikhail can tell you about, uh, where you know, we've had to fix a few things. I guess. Thanks. <clears throat> yeah, so from a technical perspective, um, one of the most important things was to, to manage the uh, networking fabric with BGP VPN using Kyobi's physical uh, switches integration. So we've prepared uh, Ansible templates for doing that and it works quite nice. Um, we are also uh, doing uh, changes in networking generics with Neutron driver uh, to support bare metal instances with uh, MLAC bonds and, and trunks to support multiple VLANs over that link. Um, we are using uh, Oven uh, in this deployment, um, so we have uh, enabled Open vSwitch hardware offload with Mellanox Connect X6 cards. Um, so Connect X6 is important in that because we can offload uh, the connection uh, tracking flows, so that means security groups and so on. So we can use security groups on the offloaded uh, VLAN networks. Uh, using SRIOV as well, um, and RDMA um, using Mellanox ASAP Square technology. So for currently we're using Neutron DHCP agent from the ML2 OVS stack uh, for external bare metal ports uh, because that functionality is still not there in Neutron, but uh, it's in progress. Um, so we should be moving uh, to native oven uh, in probably a couple of weeks time. Yeah, so um, <coughs> we've also uh, contributed to Coansible uh, like FQDN based HA proxy setup because uh, the default in Coansible is just exposing front ends on different ports and we wanted that to be like uh, better for access and the users because some ports some, sometimes are uh, filtered and so on. So, so it's FQDN based, everything is on the uh, SSL port exposed to the internet. Yeah, and also we've worked uh, on Magnum um, to enable all of those workloads. So we've enabled SMT on Fedora Core OS. Uh, the patch is in progress upstream, uh, currently being reviewed. Uh, I've also added uh, Octavia Oven provider uh, support in Magnum and in the Kubernetes OpenStack uh, provider. Uh, 
repository managed by, by Kubernetes SIG. Um, yeah, I think we are over time, but yeah. We fixed spot to pot networking in ML2 oven. There's a bug, uh, so it's currently a workaround. Neutron guys are working on, on fixing that permanently. And we also use many less FFS shares uh, on those Magnum clusters. Uh, we still need to propose the patches upstream. Thanks, Miguel. All right, so that, that's it. Um, also, we're hiring. Uh, so, you know, if you feel like moving to New Zealand, talk to me. Um, so, any questions? Else? Oh, good. I think we better get off. Thanks.